What's up guys, this is Ultima iDevice Vids, and with Apple officially discontinuing the iPod Touch line a few weeks back, in this video we're going to be taking a nostalgic trip down memory lane, reviewing and going hands-on with every iPod Touch ever released. And in addition to that, I've got the original iOS versions that shipped with each iPod Touch installed on a variety of my devices to kind of get that glance of what using these devices was like when they were first released, in addition to a collection of the most popular and used apps and games from the good old days that a lot of us remember using on these devices. And I also have some of the most popular jailbreak tweaks from over these years installed too. As for a lot of us, jailbreaking and customizing was a huge part of using an iPod Touch. And naturally, let's go ahead and kick things off with the first generation iPod Touch released back in 2007, shortly after the original iPhone launched. And this device was a huge success at the time, as it could do a lot of the things that the recent released iPhone first generation could, but at a cheaper price. Of course, it ran full iPhone OS with most of the applications that the iPhone came with as well, like the super advanced mobile Safari web browser at the time, in addition to, you know, other standard stuff like YouTube, of course, Safari and YouTube for use over Wi-Fi on the iPod Touch, and of course, other basic stuff like calendar, you know, calculator, everything like that, and of course, the music and videos apps to sync all of your music and even music videos onto to listen to and watch on the iPod Touch. And this being the first iPod with a super advanced multi-touch display made doing things like web browsing, even just scrolling through your music or scrolling through different menus feel like a brand new and luxurious experience for users. The iPod Touch first generation didn't feature a full speaker for playing media audio. You had to actually connect either headphones or speaker to the headphone jack in order to get media audio. The iPod Touch on its own could play limited alert and alarm noises, but again, no full media audio. And both the iPod Touch and the iPhone on the original iPhone OS did not ship with an app store. Apple's goal initially with the iPhone and iPod Touch was for web applications to be a big way of accessing information just, you know, through Safari. But as we know, that didn't really pan out. And because of the lack of an app store at this time, jailbreaking was the only way to install apps and games on the iPod Touch and iPhone. So, of course, this led it to become very popular as, you know, people could totally expand the functionality of their device and just do things that Apple was not allowing people to do at the time. So as you can imagine, games and applications became extremely popular at this time through jailbreaking. So I'm sure that jailbreak apps and games definitely motivated Apple to create the App Store just because of the extreme popularity. And of course, Apple did add App Store in the next major software update being iPhone OS 2. And next, we have the iPod Touch 2nd and 3rd generation. The iPod Touch 2nd generation was released in 2008, and the iPod Touch 3rd generation was released in 2009. They both share the exact same design with minor differences between the two devices, so we're going to discuss them together. The design of the iPod Touch 2nd and 3rd generation is a slight redesign over the design of the 1st generation. The back is just more curved as you can see. It's not quite as flat as the 1st generation. There's also now a speaker on board for the first time, so you can listen to media audio without headphones or an external speaker. And as a result of this, there's now volume buttons on the side. Both the iPod Touch 2nd generation generation and the third generation received spec bumps, basically just to bring up the speed of these two devices to the same speed as the iPhones that were out at the same time that these two devices were out. So the iPhone 3G for the iPod Touch second generation and the iPhone 3GS for the iPod Touch third generation, just to keep the two product lines, iPhone and iPod Touch, at the same overall processing power. The iPod Touch second generation shipped with iPhone OS 2 and the iPod Touch third generation shipped with iPhone OS 3. And once again, the iPhone OS 2 update brought the App Store. So this, of course, brought the era of App Store applications and games exploding into popularity. And the great thing about the iPod Touch was you could basically install any game or application that you could install on the iPhone on the iPod Touch as well. My first ever iOS device was an iPod Touch 2nd Gen on iOS 3. So as a younger kid, I remember playing a lot of these games. Doodle Jump was definitely my favorite, very popular at the time. And this is a game that you could still go out and download today on modern iPhones and iPod Touches, but at the time it was a brand new exciting, you know, capability to tilt your device like this to control, you know, aspects of a game using the accelerometer built in, especially on such a small and portable mobile device. I also remember having a lot of fun when I was younger with the different themes of the game down here where you could swipe and, you know, get a Halloween theme or, you know, winter themes or, you know, a whole host of other things. Also, Fruit Ninja was one of the first iPod Touch games I ever downloaded. And at the time, it was just really impressive because it took advantage of the iPod Touch and iPhone's super sensitive capacitive touchscreen capability, which most other touchscreen 
mobile devices at the time did not have just you know the quality and responsiveness of this type of touchscreen and of course the legendary iBeer app this was basically just a way to show off the accelerometer capability in the iPhone and iPod touch at the time having a device that responded to the way you tip it with such precision once again was definitely a brand new and exciting thing completely pointless but a super fun little gag I remember getting into plants vs zombies on the iPod touch at this time as well this loading screen here definitely brings back some memories this was just kind of a fun you know random strategy game again this is something that's still pretty popular today you could still go out and download this again on modern iPhones and iPod touches in addition to on a bunch of other platforms as well and scoops was another game that I remember from the time and similar to a lot of the apps I just mentioned uh, this game basically just took advantage of the accelerometer by tipping your device to catch these different ice cream scoops like this because again this was you know a pretty new technology for mobile games at the time and around this time I remember using a lot of awesome jailbreak tweaks such as winterboard which allows you to theme all of the icons on your home screen to whatever you want there were hundreds and hundreds of themes you can download and then apply using winterboard and this extends to the lock screen you know the slider again the home screen icons just completely change up the whole look and feel of your device. I remember having a lot of fun with themes around this time. I remember using Iconoclasm around this time to increase the amount of columns on the home screen just so you could fit a lot more applications on each page. And of course, SB Settings, which was basically the control center for the iPhone before Apple implemented the control center. So this allowed you to toggle things without having to go into the settings application, stuff like brightness, uh, you know, things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. This was, again, long before Apple introduced the control center, so this was super handy to have at the time. And next, we have the iPod Touch 4th generation. This device was released in 2010, and it featured a slight redesign with a more flat back than the 2nd and 3rd generation iPod Touch. Also, the power button is now moved to the other side of the top, as you can see. And the biggest headlining features of the iPod Touch 4th generation were, of course, the addition of a camera now on the back, and on the front, so you can now take pictures and videos with the iPod Touch for the very first time. And this is also the first iPod Touch to introduce FaceTime, so because of that front-facing camera, of course. The iPod Touch fourth generation also brought the Retina display to the iPod Touch for the first time. And honestly, I still think today the Retina display was the biggest advancement in iPhone and iPod Touch display technology ever. And of course, this is super difficult to show off on camera, but the display technology, you know, on the iPod Touch fourth generation in comparison to the third generation or the second generation is just so much crisper and clearer. On the older display technology, you could kind of see individual pixels easily if you looked, but it's very difficult to do that with the fourth generation. Everything just looks super crisp and clean. I remember at the time being super, super impressed with the Retina display technology. This device also features the Apple A4 chip, which is the first Apple-designed silicone processor in an iOS device. And this device launched shortly after the iPhone 4, which also featured the Apple A4 chip in addition to basically everything else I just said about the iPod Touch 4th gen as well. This was definitely Apple's strategy for the first several years of iPhone and iPod Touch, basically to release an iPhone and then shortly after release an iPod Touch with very similar features to the iPhone. And this strategy worked really well as it just allowed more people to experience the iOS ecosystem. And at this point in time, I'd say the iPod Touch line was at its peak. So many people had iPod Touches. The iPod Touch fourth generation launched with iOS 4, which at the time I'd say was the biggest iOS update so far. On newer devices like the iPod Touch fourth gen here, you can now set wallpapers on the background of your home screen natively for the first time. Apple also added an app switcher so you could quickly switch between applications with a double press of the home button your recently opened apps that is and the apps actually now remained open in the background for the first time you could close applications by pressing and holding and pressing the minus symbol. Apple also added this nifty little iPod widget for the first time as well in the app switcher. Just this overall interface always brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. And I remember messing around with a lot of the same games I just mentioned earlier around this time as well. And a few other ones that come to mind that I didn't mention earlier are Paper Toss, which as it sounds, you're basically just flicking, you know, paper into a trash can at an office cubicle and having to accommodate wind from a fan. Tiny Wings was another favorite that I had around this time. This is a game that today, as far as I 
I know was still moderately popular, just kind of building up speed as you go through these hills. And I remember a glass tower as well. Your goal was to break the blue glass squares, but try to keep the red ones preserved. And also Temple Run. This is still pretty popular today as far as I know. I still see this pop up from time to time, but I definitely remember around this time is when this game was, you know, definitely at its peak in terms of popularity. At this point in time, in my experience at least, it seemed like iPhone and iPod Touch games were just totally at their peak in terms of overall popularity. Just because having stuff like this, you know, in the palm of your hand in such a small package was pretty new and exciting at this time, which is something that a lot of us kind of take for granted today. And in terms of jailbreak tweaks around this time, barrel or cylinder, which does the same thing, is the first thing that comes to mind, which allows you to get these awesome page transitions when it's swiping between home screen pages. Another classic is five icon dock. Very simple, just allows you to put a fifth icon in your dock. And of course, winter board. As I mentioned earlier, around this time, I remember installing a lot of themes that made your device look like it was running a different operating system, for instance, Windows, just for the fun of it. As you can see in this Windows 7 theme, everything is customized from the lock screen slider, the status bar, of course, the home screen icons. Being able to do stuff like this at the time, to me at least, was just so cool being able to, you know, make an Apple device look like a Windows device and just giving your device a completely different look and feel with something like this. And next up, we have the iPod Touch 5th generation. This device was released in 2012 and it featured a major redesign over all the previous generation iPod Touches, the most noteworthy change of which being the addition of a larger 4-inch display in comparison to the 3.5-inch display on all the previous generation iPod Touches. And just the overall design was changed. It's a lot slimmer now. It's in a new aluminum style housing. And this was also the first iPod Touch to feature the Lightning Connector, which is the same connector that is featured in modern iPhones today. Previously, it was the larger 30-pin connector. Also, the speaker and headphone jack, interestingly enough, uh, swapped places here, going from the fourth generation to the fifth. And the iPod Touch fifth generation did launch alongside the iPhone 5, which was the first iPhone to feature a 4-inch display as well. Interestingly enough, though, the iPod Touch fifth generation did not feature the brand new Apple A6 processor that the iPhone 5 shipped with. The iPod Touch fifth generation featured the Apple A5 processor, which is the processor found in the iPhone 4S, which was the previous generation iPhone at the time that the iPod Touch 5th gen was released. But again, you still got most of the headlining features from the iPhone 5 on the iPod Touch 5th gen, like the larger display with the ability to fit an additional row of app icons on each home screen. The iPod Touch 5th generation's rear-facing camera did receive a big upgrade in comparison to the 4th generation, it going from 0.7 megapixels on the 4th generation to now 5 megapixels on the 5th generation. The iPod Touch 5th gen also features a flash for use with the camera now for the first time as well. You may notice this iPod Touch actually doesn't have a rear-facing camera, and that's because, interestingly enough, Apple actually started selling a cheaper budget version of the iPod Touch mid-cycle without the rear-facing camera for a cheaper price. So that's the model that I've got here. The mid-cycle budget model of the iPod Touch also lacks the iPod Touch loop, which was the feature that allowed you to attach a lanyard to this little loop that was on the back of, you know, the standard iPod Touch 5th generation. That was one of the more stranger features of the iPod Touch 5th gen. And while the iPod Touch 5th generation was definitely quite popular, I remember it not being nearly as popular as previous iPod Touch models. I'd say it was around this time that people having smartphones was becoming more and more common. And as a result of that, a lot of people started lacking the need for an iPod Touch, as their iPhone or any other smartphone basically could do everything that the iPod Touch could do. At this point in time, I basically only used my iPhone in my day-to-day -day routines, and I really didn't have a need for carrying around an iPod Touch anymore. And that's not to say that many people people didn't have uses for it, again, it was quite popular. But there was definitely a noticeable decline in popularity in comparison to the previous iPod Touch models in my experience. The iPod Touch 5th generation launched with iOS 6, and again, on the iPod Touch 5th gen here with the larger display, you got an additional row of icons on your home screen. And even though I didn't really carry around an iPod Touch around this time anymore, I definitely have a lot of memories using iOS 6 on my iPhone around this time. Some of the applications I remember using around this time are, you know, the YouTube application, Apple I actually removed the default YouTube stock application that came with iOS in iOS 6. So this is the beginning of when you actually had to download the YouTube app from the App Store. Of course, Twitter to keep up with, you know, tech news, podcasts. And in terms of game applications around this time, a few that come to mind are Subway Surfers and Temple Run 2. Around this time was when Subway Surfers was, you know, really starting to blow up and become very popular. 
course, this is still, you know, a very popular iOS game today, but this was definitely around the beginning of its popularity. And Temple Run 2, the second version of the game, also launched around this time. I definitely remember this being a super popular, just with the kind of... Uh, Slightly changed up uh, game landscape. And in terms of jailbreak tweaks, a few that come to mind are, of course, Barrel, once again, or Cylinder, which does the same thing. As always, a classic go-to tweak. Also, OXO was an awesome multitasking enhancement tweak around this time that allowed you to get full app preview screenshots in the app switcher so you could get an idea of what was going on in an application before you switched to it, which at the time was not natively possible in iOS. Apple did add it in iOS 7 and later, but this was before that. It also featured a tweaked music player in the app switcher, and it also allowed you to have toggles once again, similar to the way that Control Center works today, but this was before that was introduced, so you could easily toggle things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and whatnot, all without having to go into the settings application. I also remember using Zephyr, which brought gesture-based controls to the iPhone and iPod Touch at the time, which is something that we have natively today course on all the iPhones that don't have a home button but at the time of course again it was not possible by default so you could just drag up to close an app and you could drag up and hold to get into the app switcher and you could even switch between applications just by swiping on the side of the screen. Again, this is very similar to the way that iOS does this now by default, which is kind of crazy to see. And also Unfold, which allowed you to get this really cool accordion style uh, lock animation when you slide to unlock. And almost three years later, Apple released the iPod Touch 6th generation. This device featured the exact same design as the iPod Touch 5th generation, the only external change being the removal of the iPod lanyard loop from the back. The iPod Touch sixth generation was basically just a massive spec bump for the iPod Touch, not much else. It added the latest Apple A8 chip from the latest iPhone at the time, being the iPhone 6. So the iPod Touch sixth generation at the time was incredibly powerful. It had the latest processor from the latest iPhone inside. That being said, it still had the very same design that was released again almost three years before in 2012. So it was an interesting combination, kind of similar to what we see in iPhone SE models today with again, new processor, but older design. And similar to what I said for the iPod Touch 5th generation, by this point in time, the iPod Touch was significantly waning in popularity. As in mid-2015, when this device launched, smartphones were 100% mainstream, and as a result, most people didn't have a need for a device like this. Not to say that this wasn't a great iPod Touch, though. The most popular use cases for this device at the time were probably for children who were too young to have an iPhone, or maybe just a device that you keep at home as a dedicated music player, or maybe a device you you bring to the gym as again a dedicated music device. It launched with iOS 8 which was the latest iOS version at the time and as a result of myself and many others you know really only using the iPhone at this point in time I don't have any super you know nostalgic old applications to share from this time period. The novelty of you know having applications on the iPod Touch specifically at this point had kind of worn off. So of course any applications that you could run on the iPhone on iOS 8 you could also run on the iPod Touch on iOS 8. Same thing goes for jailbreak tweaks. Of course, any jailbreak tweaks that you could install on the iPhone on iOS 8, you could install on the iPod Touch on iOS 8. And almost four years later, in 2019, Apple released the seventh generation iPod Touch. And once again, it featured the exact same design as the previous sixth generation, which also featured the exact same design as the previous fifth generation. Just like the last generation, the iPod Touch seventh gen is basically just a spec bump over the sixth generation. The iPod Touch seventh gen features the same processor found in the iPhone 7, which is the Apple A10 chip. And at this time, the iPhone 7 and the A10 chip were almost three years old, so it's not like Apple put the latest, most fastest processor in the iPod Touch 7. Apple releasing the iPod Touch 7th gen really felt like they were doing the absolute bare minimum to keep the iPod Touch alive and running on the latest version of iOS, especially because they announced and released the iPod Touch 7th gen just a few days before WWDC, where they announced iOS 13, which dropped support for the previous iPod Touch 6th gen. So it almost seemed like it was worth it enough to them to update the product line, again, just to keep it running the latest iOS, but not really to do anything other than just, you know, upgrading the product.
processor inside because everything else on this device is, you know, basically exactly the same. And at this point in time in, you know, mid 2019, really just a few years ago, I couldn't tell you a single person that I knew who, you know, still owned an iPod touch or used one for anything. But the fact that Apple actually released this product just a few years ago does tell me that, you know, at the time, at least there had to have been some substantial group of people that were still buying iPod touches. I assume for the same reasons that I just mentioned for the sixth gen, maybe for, you know, younger kids or just as a dedicated music player. The iPod Touch 7th generation launched with iOS 12, which was the latest iOS version at the time. And in terms of applications, I mean, this was just a few years ago, so I really don't have anything even remotely nostalgic or anything to show you. And once again, kind of going back to what I just said a few seconds ago, the novelty of, you know, using an iPod Touch specifically and downloading applications on an iPod Touch was long gone at this point. So basically anyone using an iPod Touch around, you know, the iOS 12 era could download any applications that iPhone users could download at that time. And the same thing goes for jailbreak tweaks. Any jailbreak tweaks that you could install on iPhones jailbroken on iOS 12, you could also install on iPod Touches jailbroken on iOS 12. And on May 10th, 2022, so just a few weeks ago, Apple announced that they're discontinuing the iPod line. Of course, their reasoning just being that, you know, music and being able to stream, download music, everything that the iPods have been able to do has been incorporated into, you know, all of Apple's current products, being the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac, Apple Watch. So with that being said, the iPod Touch 7th generation is not only the last iPod Touch to ever be released, but it's the last iPod to ever be released from Apple, which is crazy. I'm honestly a little surprised that they kept it around as long as they did. But as I said earlier, the fact that they updated this as recent as, you know, three years ago does show that there was definitely at least some interest in the product line. And in terms of where the iPod Touch 7th generation is today, it's still able to run the latest iOS version as of recording this video being iOS 15. So at the time, you're still able to install any applications that are available on the iPhone on the iPod Touch. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, in just a few days, Apple's going to announce iOS 16 at their WWDC 2022 conference. And it's unknown if Apple's next major iOS release, being iOS 16, is going to support the iPod Touch 7th generation. Of course, we'll have to see in a few days about that. But that just about wraps it up for this video. The iPod Touch will always hold a very special place in my heart, as it was the very first iOS device that I ever owned. And it's really what got me into Apple products as a whole. If you guys have any fun memories of using the iPod Touch, let me know down below in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.